Do we really think that Trump was trying to subvert American democracy by hiding classified documents? No. And, and the difference with what I was saying with Hillary is that she was looking at and operating that email account personally. She was the one yeah. reading the emails and engaging in the reckless attempt to hide from public scrutiny her email communications. She didn't have a classified email address at the State Department. I mean, this is crazy. Um, but Donald Trump isn't in charge of reviewing personally 15 boxes of uh, does anyone think for one second trump is there like this is probably classified this is probably <laughs> not class no mar-a-lago we've been talking a lot about the raid i don't know if I necessarily believe everything in this story that I am about to share with you because it's from Newsweek. And, Buck, I don't remember the last time that Newsweek broke a story that mattered. Do you? Like, when I, I remember back in the day, Newsweek, even during the Clinton impeachment trial, and they, I think Michael Isakoff, if I remember correctly, Isikoff, may have yeah. been it, at Newsweek. It's gotten better. Break the My news. friend Josh Hammer runs their editorial page now. They. They've they've gone a little that they've moved away from crazy left. So I don't know if they're breaking news stories quite yet, but I do know their editorial page has gotten some sanity. Yeah, I met Josh. He was down at the uh, Sunshine Summit. That's I right. Think, right. Um, good dude. All right. So I am reading from Newsweek. Uh, this story came out earlier today, right before we went on the air. And it says uh, and the headline is exclusive and informer told the FBI what docs Trump was hiding and where. Uh, and it says the raid on Mar-a-Lago, this is the opening paragraph from the Newsweek story. The raid on Mar-a-Lago was based largely on information from an FBI confidential human source, one who was able to identify what classified documents former President Trump was still hiding, even the location of those documents, Two senior government officials told Newsweek. Uh, the officials that Newsweek says have direct knowledge of the FBI's deliberations were granted uh, anonymity, which makes sense, in order to discuss sensitive matters. Uh, they say that, and this would be a, a colossal miscalculation if these FBI idiots really thought this. They say that they believed that by doing the raid while Trump was not at Mar-a-Lago, and while he was at New York, uh, that they would keep the raid, quote, low key. <laughs> and that instead, it turned into a furious response. Uh, the justice official that they quote anonymously here says, what a spectacular backfire. Here's a quote from that justice official, Buck. I know there's much speculation out there. This is a political persecution. But it's really the best and the worst of the bureaucracy and action. They wanted to punctuate the fact this was a routine law enforcement action stripped of any political overtones, and they got exactly the opposite. This is what I've been telling everybody, Clay. Do not assume the other side has some strategic genius making these decisions. Joe Biden is the president, everybody. <laughs> Look at who runs the Democrat Party. They are... Uh, delusional about Trump. They have terrible judgment about anything involving Trump. And there may be an effort now to, to blame on the bureaucracy. Another thing we have to keep in mind, what was really a politicized decision from the top. In essence, oh, it's not that Merrick Garland and Biden and other senior officials at the DOJ wanted to do this to send a message for Trump uh, against Trump. It's that now that it's backfiring on them, it's, hey, just the, just the bureaucracy doing its job, man. No big deal here. Nothing to see. So that is a narrative I think we have to be aware of as a possibility. But here's something you kept asking, bringing up. What if it's a letter from Kim Jong-un? Okay. I was just trying to give an idea of something right. that we knew existed that could be but, that they want in the archives. Yeah. Here, here's where we – here's what you're – you could see something because there's really two possibilities here. Something that is politically devastating for Trump that they found in these boxes, which I think the chance of that is the chance of me getting into the press box and calling the whole game for Alabama <laughs> v. Texas a or UT uh, Texas. Right. That's not going to UT Austin. That's not going to happen. The other possibility, though, because I kept saying this in the initial initial phases, is the classified information piece of this. Now. It may be the case that in these documents, it's very easy, by the way, to 
it's better, you're moving that volume of documents from the White House. It's very easy for some things to get in there that might have been marked classified that are declassified by Trump, but not marked that way. Remember, he has real time declassification authority. Hillary Clinton did not as Secretary of State, which is didn't important... we also have? Sorry to cut you off, but didn't we have the uh, one of Trump's top assistants who said that most of these documents had been declassified yes. and the paperwork? He came on our show, if I remember correctly. So, so what they may, uh, what they may have here, uh, we're talking about Cash when Cash Patel. I think came when on? Cash yeah. came on yeah, the Cash show with us, I could, I could reach out to Cash and ask. That him would be about good to have that conversation again with him. But but let's say there is one document here or a handful of documents that are legitimately marked, let's say, top secret and are not being held in the proper uh, in the proper storage. Uh, the Democrats may decide to dig in on that as this is a felony. This is a violation of the Espionage Act. That is the only thing that I could see them. Try- now, I don't think that'll play, really, because. I mean, first of all, this stuff is under lock and key at Mar-a-Lago. The Secret Service is there. You know, it's it's not on a server where someone can hack into it. No one got access to this. And there and then the, the issue becomes Trump isn't going through this himself. So if it, Hillary Clinton was operating really the email hard account, to prove. Donald you Trump, know, every crime, every crime buck requires mens rea and actus rea by and large. You have to have the intent to commit the crime and you have to have done an act in furtherance of that crime. Do we really think that Trump was trying to subvert American democracy by hiding classified documents? No. And and the difference with it, I was saying, with Hillary is that she was looking at and operating that email account personally. She was the one reading the emails and engaging in the reckless attempt to hide from public scrutiny her email communications. She didn't have a classified email address at the State Department. I mean, this is crazy. Um, But Donald Trump isn't in charge of reviewing personally 15 boxes of uh, does anyone think for one second trump is there like this is probably classified this is probably <laughs> not class no so the note so there's I no think- way he's packing the boxes when they're leaving the white house either. yeah well, so let this me ask you I mean. this buck even if there's something that's classified in these boxes that would actually be a white house transition bureaucratic mess up they're gonna they might try to say oh but trump is ultimately responsible give me a break so that's where I think they may try to take this to cover up the fact that it was an intimidation raid. So this Newsweek article, I got one more quote, and then I got a theory I want to get your reaction to. Uh, quote from the Newsweek article, they were seeking to avoid any media circus, a senior intelligence official who was briefed on the investigation and the operation said. So even though everything made sense bureaucratically and the FBI feared the documents might be destroyed, They also created the very firestorm they sought to avoid and ignoring the the fallout. Okay, let me ask you this. If Trump doesn't release the statement that he released on Monday evening, that his place had been raided by FBI agents, that they even broke into his safe. Remember, they had previously gone to Mar-a-Lago and examined these documents. Trump himself even walked by and said hi, they say. They locked, padlocked the basement door. Does this raid even become a story if Trump doesn't put out his statement Monday evening? Wait, so, you, I mean, there are 30 people there, so people would have known about it. I, I But what I'm saying is we didn't know, I don't remember the story being written about that they had had federal agents and people go and visit Mar-a-Lago before to look at these boxes and these documents. In other words, what I'm asking is, did Trump own the story in a way that they thought Trump would not by putting out that statement about the fact that this raid had occurred and they were thinking, I I mean, just just mean In their minds, it was, hey, just business as usual, sending 30 FBI guys to Mar-a-Lago to go through stuff. I See, Clay, I, I worry that this is now the after-the-fact narrative that they're going to try to push. We didn't think this would be thermonuclear in politics. We didn't think this would be DEFCON 1. Like, well, I, I, I'm not, the I, I only mean, how dumb can they really it, be? I think they're really dumb. Well, so, that's, but this that, is kind of what we're asking. How low can yeah. they go? Well, the reason why I'm asking it is no one, Trump broke the story that this happened. CNN wasn't sitting there at the front gate running cameras when the FBI agents arrived. 
MSNBC didn't break this. The New York Times didn't break this. The Washington Post didn't break this. Trump broke this story when he put out his statement right. on Monday evening. So my question is just, did Trump outsmart the FBI and the Department of Justice and the apparatus by doing something that they didn't anticipate he would do in going public and attacking them before anybody... Remember, there was no other story out there. Think about how often we know. To your point, uh, every time when they when they showed up at Roger Stone's place with guns, oh, CNN was miraculously there at 5.30 a.m. Like, they were tipped off. There's nobody tipped off that this raid was happening. This news didn't get broken by a uh, Biden-friendly source. It was Trump putting out his statement that the, set off right. the raging conflagration so of this there story. There are a couple of things that I, I it, it is very interesting, actually, how, how this went down with regard to the timeline and, and who, who found out about it and when. As you and I recall, I mean, you're at Mar- Mar-a-Lago, the members there, guys walking around, you're used to seeing Secret Service and everything. So it, unless you were really aware of what they were doing, very yep. unlikely. So the only people that are really going to know what's happening with the search in that, because also it's in the private quarters. It's not, you know, there weren't throwing over the tables where the guests are sitting and saying, everybody, you know, hit the deck. Yeah. So uh, so they wouldn't have necessarily said anything. And the media wouldn't be close enough because they're not going to be allowed into the actual area. There's a big, there's a checkpoint there. So they wouldn't get close enough to actually show anything. And I think on this one, they probably recognize that a tip off in advance of this would then make it impossible to run the we're just law and order. There's no politics here narrative. I think they realized the Roger Stone raid was Democrats loved it, but it was a blunder. It was a yeah. blunder. It showed their hand. So I just want everybody out there to think about it. All day long, those agents are conducting the raid at Mar-a-Lago. We don't find out about it, if I were correct, Buck, until around 6.30 Eastern when Trump put out his statement on Truth Social. So they were there for all day. No one actually knows it's going on. And my question for you out there, and I think it's worth thinking about, is did Trump completely snow them under and take advantage of their stupidity in a way that they didn't anticipate it? Just tossing it out there to think about because he broke this story.